This is Frontier Opening Bell. I'm Temple Ashaju. Thank you for joining us on the program. With us on the show this morning, we've got Shegun Adams, an industrial goods analyst at Greenwich Merchant Bank based in Nigeria. Thank you for coming in on the show. Mosna Mofai, Executive Editor at Frontier Africa Reports. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on our Thursday edition of this program on the 17th of February 2021. Let's look at the indexes that we have and we are tracking at Frontier Africa Reports. Nigeria was down yesterday. Marginally by 0.07%. Um, Ivory Coast was positive marginally by 0.05%. And the Egyptian Stock Exchange had a dive of 1.05% on Wednesday. Kenya was positive by some 0.34%, while South Africa, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in that country, was down 0.17%. Now, looking at the Eastern African headlines, We'll begin with the Kenyan Airways offering a uh, where the federal government there is offering some 26.5 billion um, shillings in uh, shareholder loan. And uh, the Nairobi Stock Exchange and the Manufacturers Association uh, in an agreement to enhance uh, visibility of manufacturing companies. Uh, the Dar es Stock Exchange in Tanzania uh, got Airtel to launch mobile stock trading platform. Zambia has raised some uh, has raised some fifty uh, has raised its rates by fifty business points to eight point five percent, and that is actually to be able to tame inflation, which has been uh, seriously rising in recent times. In Rwanda, uh, New Kigali International Financial Center uh, looks to open by June twenty twenty one this year. This is an initiative that came on stream um, sometimes last year. Uh, Bosin, you are the one to deal with these headlines uh, in the Eastern African region. I Yes, thank you so much. I think the interest rate uh, decision by, by Zambia was very surprising. But again, a number of African uh, central banks are beginning to, to raise rates uh, after we saw a very rapid haircut last year, early last year, by this time last year, February, March, April, uh, almost all the countries within the continent uh, did uh, uh, rate cuts. Uh, Nigeria also did a 50 basis points at some point, somewhere in the, around the middle of the year. But now it looks like uh, with treasury bills in the U.S. rising and uh, the whole optimism that the vaccine is getting a little bit, we need to now start beginning to stimulate the economy a little bit forward. So it looks like the uh, season of uh, interest rate hike is beginning to start with Zambia doing half a percent basis point just to show some hands, see how things are going to work out. Uh, Rwanda is holding, the central bank is holding its uh, monetary policy meeting today as well. The word is out that it's likely going to raise interest rate again to also stimulate the economy moving forward. Zambia is a little bit different. Again, if you look at the problem it's had with its finances, at Galungus, there's a major presidential election down in August or so. They've got a problem with Glencore, the world's largest copper mining company. It's got a problem with a few Vendata, uh, Vedanta, which is another mining resource companies in terms of the whole uh, sharing agreement between the government of mining resources and, and these uh, international um, mining firms. So Zambia is also into some debt defaulted on its euro bond with three investors uh, that the repayment was pushed up to about April this year, I think about 25, 28 million US dollars. So Zambia is in that particular very tight corner right now, but trying to smooth things out before the next elections. Kenya Airways is good to try to save these airlines from falling off the skies, trying to do a retooling. So the administration of President Kenyatta is giving them additional 26 billion shillings, try to let them not lose the market to the big brother up north and that is uh, ethiopian airlines and south african airways we also discussed this yesterday saving the uh, saa by additional five billion uh around as well so i think this is all about let us just try not to go down the line good news from Dar es Salaam getting airtel to partner to float this uh, mobile money mo sorry mobile trading platform in other words you can trade the shares of companies on the rest of stock exchange using the uh the the app on through the airtel which is a major uh telco company i love this innovation and opening up using technology to open up trading to retail investors across africa in different countries to trade their market good news there Mm -hmm. so just before we move on, I mean, we understand that 38% of the stake in the Kenyan Airways actually belongs to banks in Kenya. I mean, how much of a big win will this be for them at the end of the day? Uh, the banks holding the Kenya Airways, you know, the share price has been it was suspended for some time last year. It wasn't trading for some time because of the problem. They're still trying to find their way out of this huge debt 
that the company has on its books. But, but I think the government will try to convince the partners to other investors to stay on uh, and say, find a way around it. Just hang on a little bit. Let's see how this pandemic and the vaccine will come through. Then everybody will try to get back into the skies, rejig the business model a little bit more towards cargo rather than passengers. All this might just be a way out to save the Kenya Airways, a very iconic brand that listed not just on the Kenya boss, but also listed in one or two other exchanges within the, within the East African community. True. Thanks a great deal for all of this analysis, Paulson. Let's move on now to the Western African markets. We have brains, we understand, is now 65% uh, higher uh, since November 2020, halting global economic recovery, says uh, Indian energy chief. Uh, Central Bank of Nigeria issues guidelines uh, for opening for open banking in Nigeria, and data and application program interface API, data sharing by banks and payments ecosystem, all that on top. Um, ex Augusto CEO, um, uh, that's Vivian Shobo, actually becomes Infra Credit new uh, non executive director. Uh, you are more, we know that Togo is now to issue the first stimulus bonds of 20 billion CFA on February the 19th. That's uh, very soon. Ghana Central Bank warns against uh, money doubling, um, card loading uh, systems, and all of these other uh, rampart uh, programs that are illegitimate and illegal in that country. I'll come to you quickly with some of the top headlines that we have here. Uh, Shegu, uh, looking at the grains, which is rising at 65%, the central bank guidelines are on open banking, and of course, um, any other development that you may want to uh, take a look at or touch on, on these headlines that we have from Western African region. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, to start off with um, India, <clears throat> So um, even though we've seen Brent um, recover from um, the multi-year lows we saw last year um, in the heat of the pandemic, which is good for commodity exporters, um, the likes of Nigeria, Angola, you see that there is also concern on the other hand for um, countries that are dependent on energy, that import energy rather, as how this might affect or translate to higher consumer prices, uh, as you see in the case of India. So um, I, I recall that in the last, over the last quarters, India has um, had headline inflation um, above 6%, which is um, above its target or range of two to 6%, uh, which is not good. Um, I think um, um, the uh, Reserve Bank is concerned um, about how this will translate to higher consumer prices. Uh, we can recall that India um, imports more than two-thirds of its um, energy requirement. So this is um, very significant to them and it could affect or slow down economic activities um, if inflation is going high. Um, bringing it to me, you can see in the case of Nigeria, we recently saw um, our January inflation reports where, um, aside the food pressure which we are used to, we saw core inflation also uh, move higher. And you can see that um, uh, transportation costs also in Nigeria was up um, as well as other sub indices in the core inflation. And this can be reflective of um, the higher um, price of crude. So it's a double edged sword, especially for um, countries that are um, energy dependent. Um, we all um, we are we all are aware rather that growth is still tentative. While, while we think um, we are already on the path of recovery, however unsteady that might be, um, countries are still trying to be careful, or some countries are still trying to be careful to ensure that um, that growth materialize and as soon as possible they realize it. So um, I think um, India is very much concerned how that high energy cost to translate into consumer prices and overall might affect consumer demand. So, um, uh, and then uh, when, we are, uh, when we look at current happenings um, um, in the United States where we have um, Texas and um, the very sudden change in temperature, which has affected um, oil production, you can see that um, the prospects for oil um, maintaining that 65 um, in the near term or going higher is there. And um, I think India, which is a heavy importer, is just natural for it to call to OPEC. Okay, um, I think it's time for us to reduce, um, to increase some of those, um, um, to reduce some of those production costs rather and then um, see how we can, we can balance things. Thank you. Thanks a great deal, Shagun. Boston, let me come to you with the central bank's um, uh, guidelines on open banking in Nigeria. I mean, what does that mean uh, for the financial space? 
I think what the I think what the central bank thank you I think what the central bank is trying to do what they call open banking is to ensure that banks and other uh, payment uh, companies within the ecosystem are on the same page in terms of data sharing in terms of uh, application interface and 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 all of that this is part of what the central bank is is, is doing and, and let me let me let me say this you know um, there are all, a lot of other payment system companies coming up in fintech like Airtel Africa, like MTN, Momo, uh, mobile operation, mobile operators, and a whole lot of others. Now, uh, I, I'm trying to suspect that this may have to do with the cryptocurrency thing to be sure that, look, if, if you're not sharing data or you're not sharing applications or, or there's no interface and what have you, it's possible that some folks could be somewhere doing some things within the fintech space outside the bank that could hold the banking system. You know, there's this whole lot of, of uh, marriage now between fintech and banking. Banking is not yeah. what we used to know. Technology now is banking, banking is technology. And you can now do a whole lot of transactions and whatever without going through the banks uh, at all, okay? So, but again, at the end of the day, it could have consequences for the banking sector because at the end of the day, there is always a claim somewhere. Don't let us, there's no free lunch anywhere. Somebody's paying for it somehow. Even if it's yeah. free school feeding children, it's coming out of the budget. You have to take taxpayers' money to pay for that. So we are paying for it. So there's no free lunch. So if, you, if the folks, if folks in FinTech are going to run with whatever innovation and technology, and we're happy to be part of that in the services industry, but this uh, knowing me, knowing you, data open skies for everybody in terms of applications, in terms of data sharing is very, very good. I think the CBN is putting this in place very quickly, taking perhaps some of the feedback from the fintech community and others in terms of how to move forward in terms of this digital currency. And again, if one day, maybe soon, the CBN will be doing mission its own digital currency, you want to be sure that data and everything is shared among all parties. So that again, so that the banks don't even uh, have an undue advantage by the fintech people, that the whole ecosystem is changing. And I think yeah. that's what they try to do. Yeah. I mean, everyone recognizes the fact that cryptography is actually a solid um, equipment and infrastructure at this point for money management. So, and it also has policies. That's what central banks across the globe are now seeing or realizing. Let's move on now to the Southern African space. Uh, where inflation uh, has ticked up to 3.2 percent since January, uh, retail sales are shrunk by 1.3 percent as of December. These are data coming coming out from uh, South Africa. Uh, more than 50 percent of South Africans uh, may have had the coronavirus, as uh, says the CEO of Discovery Insurance, that's Adrian Gore. Uh, South Africa's discount, the pharmacy here, grows revenue by 12.1 percent. Botswana diamonds and diamond extract. Diamond extract uh, to fast track exploration, uh, Bank of Namibia keeps policy rate steady at three point seven five percent. Shagun, I'm not. I don't know how deep your knowledge about the South African market is, uh, but uh, looking at inflation rising at three point two percent and that of Nigeria at sixteen point four seven percent, do you want to juxtapose this data and give us a sense of your understanding? Um, for the two countries, um, I think um, we have to. Um, admit that we have um, different structures, we are faced with um, different problems at this point in time. So in the case of Nigeria, we saw that somehow um, the inflation, inflationary pressures we are seeing is self-inflicted. Um, it's coming from um, some of the legacy issues we have seen. Um, we saw the impact of the border closure, even though it was reopened in December, we still saw some of it. Um, um, we still saw it linger into January and um, we have the crisis up along the food producing areas. Um, we have climate um, issues. So um, when you want to just oppose, I'm always very careful about that because um, when you look at the factors, you see that, um, I mean, some of them are very peculiar to particular economies. Um, that said, um, well, for South Africa, there are inflation coming to 3.2 um, from 3.1 in December. Um, I think um, it's, it's mild compared to what we see in Nigeria, um, this sharp increase. And I must say that for, for us, um, Nigeria, um, it's not um, good enough for us to be having such um, 
um, sudden changes in or sudden increases in price levels in Mikau to investment. It's not with beyond investment to see the effects, um, the real time wealth destruction. It's not um, um, encouraging at all. Um, so um, what I'll say is just that um, we have to really look at um, this. Um, we have to look inward rather and address these issues, um, especially as it relates to security. Um, I think we have to up our game and prepare for um, the changes in climate, uh, which we're already seeing. See Texas, uh, where um, they're having snow and it's all very strange. I think. Um, um, last year, we also saw flooding in Nigeria along some food belt. So um, the weather as we, or let me say climate change is here, it's real. And so there are a lot of things we have to uh, put together. Um, okay. I'm talking about Nigeria, so um, I think that's uh, very important for us. All right, then. Thank you very much, Shego. Uh, also, let me come with, come to you with these headlines. I mean, you've got inflation there, you've got the corporate uh, 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 disclosure there as well. Yes, the, 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 yes, the whole issues around uh, inflation, of course, there are two different uh, foes for different folks. So uh, Shegun was very, very correct in terms of, you don't have the whole headsman, insurgency, whatever, what have you. In South Africa, there was no border closure. It's an industrialized economy, no matter how you look at it, even though unemployment is also high within the South African space. So they've got a whole backbone industrial, good, better infrastructure to lean on than Nigeria. So the food supply locally and what have you has not been as disrupted as Nigeria has had, even though they had a bit of a climate change. So it's a whole different ball game here when you talk about inflation. 3.6% on one hand and 20, about 16, 17% on the other hand. Look, we're t we're, we live on two different planets, by the way. But the most uh, 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 interesting part of this is the uh, issue around the virus uh, infections, where I'm particularly happy that the footprints in South Africa is slowing down slightly, even though the second variant is still a whole lot of concern. There was news this morning that AstraZeneca has been cleared as, a, as a, one of the uh, uh, jab for South Africa. That's good news. The news from Discovery yesterday was disturbing as much as 50% of the population could have gotten it because about 5,000 people have died who are members of Discovery uh, Health uh, Insurance Program. So they know the numbers. If you have 5,000 uh, customers died from the virus in your business, I'm sure you'll be feeling the heat. Uh, 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 Santam Insurance in South Africa is feeling the heat as well. It's paying a whole lot of claims for businesses whose uh, operations have been disrupted by COVID-19. So it's a whole lot of mess as it were. But I think the latest numbers are showing that look at retail sales down 1.3 percent. They could do a whole lot better since the uh, massive uh, uh, hit on liquor sales. Spark Group reported yesterday, two days ago, we got Shoprite reporting a decline in alcohol consumption during the period under review towards the end of last year. Level okay. four, level three lockdown. Now it looks like a, 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 they, if you get back to level two and back to level one with the restrictions on alcohol consumption and transportation, then you don't collapse the liquor industry, in particular the brewers who are one of the major employers of labor in South Africa and taxpayers comp companies as well. Thank you very much, Bosin. In costing home now with the Northern African headlines, let's look at Morocco Society. Uh, engineering Energetics getting some $965,000 uh, uh, AFDP, AFDP grants. Um, inflation expected to also rise, according to Central Bank of Tunisia, to some 4.8% in Q1. And of course, of uh, chief among these headlines is that Egypt actually signs 10 new, ele 10 new contracts uh, for gold exploration worth $11.2 million. Uh, Bosin, you don't want to come to a game with these headlines mm -hmm. here. Just a quick one. There's nothing the Egyptians won't dig for. They, they, we, we talk about folks who have this mentality of economic diversification is the Egyptians. They're digging for oil, they're digging for gas, they're, they're digging for coal, they're digging for gold. They're doing practically everything that we should be doing in Nigeria here. But, but again, I'm, I'm so happy for them. Uh, Tunisia's uh, central bank looking at inflation at about 4.8%. That's not too far from South Africa's figure, by the way. Remember, uh, Morocco got... Uh, Morocco on its own side, in bed with AFDB over this energy production, uh, mm -hmm. getting a grant. Look, AFDB will support you as long as you get your bearings right, if the environment is right, mm -hmm. even though the organization is headed by a Nigerian. So don't worry about that. Money flows. It's an investor's money. So and these are other investors, sovereign countries and investors' money. So they're not going to give it to you for free. 
they follow they put the money where the policies and the environment is right if we don't get it right in nigeria we're not going to get this money it's simple uh arithmetic you don't need to have a phd in mathematics or so to, to the challenge goes on for nigeria actually and a couple of other african countries we need to get our acts right actually Thank you so much, Abbas and Amofaya, I get to the Start Frontier Africa reports for your perspectives on the show this morning. Chegu Adams joining us uh, from Greenwich Merchant Bank. You just debuted on the show today. We hope to see more of you on the show. Thank you so much for your analysis. Uh, this has been Frontier Opening Bell. I made a mistake earlier. I said 17th of February. No, it's actually 18th of February, 2021. And this has been the show for today. I'm Ben Blanchard. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.